Good morning to everyone. Thank you for attending today's session, Docstar ECM 101. Uh, we'll be starting off with a quick PowerPoint presentation focusing on some of the changes in the new Docstar ECM, um, previously known as Eclipse. So if you've heard the word Eclipse, uh, we've rebranded the product to Docstar ECM. Uh, so today we're going to go through just a quick PowerPoint. I understand if there are some uh, folks that have been through this demonstration, uh, there might be some repetitive stuff in here. Um, so what we're trying to do is compare and contrast some of the new features in uh, Docstar ECM as they're compared to the Docstar 3X product. So the Docstar 3X product is the legacy product, the desktop version uh, that is now end of life. Uh, so if you are on that version, uh, please contact us to, to make arrangements. Uh, but uh, what we're going to be focusing on uh, today is kind of a cursory review over the different feature functions of the new Eclipse Docstar ECM product, uh, focusing on the new user interface, uh, the capture. Uh, there are some different ways in capturing because it is a browser-based solution. Indexing, searching, editing, outputting, uh, workflow. And we're going to end with a little bit of integration. We'll show you the smart link function. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, basically, Docstar is the next generation. It is full browser-based, uh, so there is no need for components like NetConnect, if you are uh, familiar with that. It is now available in a cloud or a hybrid uh, deployment. So if you are on the 3X product, uh, talk to us about our cloud. Um, this way you don't have to go and buy a Windows server. And uh, you know, if you are a heavily compliant type organization, we do have a private cloud servers uh, for standing encryption for FINRA or SEC compliance. Uh, the the nice thing about Docs or ECM, it does store in its native file format. So if you put a Word or a PDF, it does store in that file format, where in previous, the 3X version, it would store as single page, multi-page TIFFs, I'm sorry, single page TIFF files, uh, which was somewhat proprietary. Um, but out of the box, when you do get Docs or ECM now, you do, do get a number of features that weren't available in, in the previous product. One, a full records management uh, for not only retention scheduling, so how long do we hold a document and what do we do with it once it hits that disposition date, uh, we can purge or move documents, as well as freeze documents for things like uh, litigation uh, to ensure best case evidence. Uh, also, uh, out of the box, you do get document workflow. It is a full feature function. It just uh, provides a single step. And single step means if then type function versus an if then else. Um, you would then buy our advanced workflow module. It also comes with the universal search bar, the office and the print uh, drivers, um, and as well as the full revision control. There is this concept of tabular data support where you do line item coding. So if you're doing um, something like AP automation or accounts receivable, uh, where you're taking in documents that have tabular data, line items, uh, we support that now. Um, and there's some new features in the 18.2 version that's coming out that will allow you to move the accordions, uh, the, uh, which you'll see the kind of panels into other areas of the screen. So it makes it a little bit more user friendly as well as email monitoring. So a nice feature here is we can monitor a process email box, invoices at yourdomain.com. We can automatically monitor that, pull all those documents in, uh, strip the attachments, and then do OCR on it. So uh, major changes around the taxonomy or the ability to take a template, and now we uh, refer to templates really as workflows. Uh, content types are essentially what gets set up first. The content type, like AP invoice, correspondence, contract, uh, then has five different pieces to it, one being the workflow. So in the past, you would select a template. Now you're going to select a content type, and the content type is going to delineate any pre or post workflows that would occur on that document. Uh, the content type also selects what uh, folder or inbox location. Uh, the default security class, the fields that describe the document, as well as any records retention, record category, we call them. So when we go to capture, and you'll see this in the demonstration, we only select the content type. That will then predefine everything else. 
A few other nice security features. There is what we call ad hoc security. So one, um, as part of a workflow, you can change the security. So if somebody captures something, you can take away their security, um, as well as the ability to document level security. So um, you can really segment and be very granular in terms of uh, access to documents. Uh, the audit trail uh, is pretty enhanced. It, it actually tracks 124 different actions that happen in the system. The audit trail can be accessed from the document or from the admin tab. And uh, additionally, uh, you can, uh, we have three concepts, um, named, concurrent, and view licensing. So there's three types of licensing in the new product. And if you are looking for reserve licensing, make sure you always have a license, you have that capability with the name, the license. Um, so check with us if you're interested in that. Uh, there's uh, a new feature in 18.2 where you can actually, uh, so right now, all the columns that get returned, your custom field columns like invoice number, vendor name, can be dynamic based on a saved search. So this is a feature that was out, that's coming out um, shortly, and uh, I find is very useful. And also things like export the CSV, which will output a hyperlink to that document as well. Uh, other things, output, uh, you do also uh, have the ability to email um, internal or external uh, via SMTP. Um, in the prior versions, uh, some sort of a MAPI client would be required. This allows us to support things like tablets and mobile devices so that you don't have to have a Outlook or a MAPI client local. Uh, things like Zone OCR, Image Stamps, Lasso OCR, um, which I'll kind of get into, um, bulk importing. A lot of these things are just inherent to the application. So the true imaging functions of um, working with paper and electronic documents is in full effect here. We have this new concept of workflow queues and dashboards for visibility into a workflow process. I think this gives uh, our product a, a step above. It makes it very um, task oriented, uh, as well as uh, some predefined workflow. So the ability to do approval routing, either mobile or through a traditional uh, PC client, and that uh, doesn't require any setup, as well as a expiration notification, which we call set due date. So these two out of the box workflow functions don't require any setup, very easy to use. Um, for those I IT guys out there, uh, we do support SAML 2.0 authentication. Um, so if you have cloud services, uh, this is the most current uh, authentication provider, but also support all the LDAP providers as well. All right, um, you know, lastly, uh, all the different types of edit functions, annotations uh, are supported on both native and image formats. We're in the previous version of 3X you could only annotate image images. Um, now, if it's a Word document, you want to put an annotation on it, not a problem. Uh, so, you know, that's part of our uh, web viewer control that allows us to do that. But deleting, splitting, reordering, all that kind of stuff's built in. Um, also, with um, probably two versions ago, uh, when you do a check-in, check-out, um, it will now launch that whatever that native file is into its uh, native application that's running. So if you're in a Word document, you hit check out instead of it just dropping into the downloads folder, it will now automatically start Microsoft Office Word and pop open the document. So it saves a couple clicks um, and then you'll see as part of uh, the demonstration here today um, some additional functionality there. So I'm kind of um, moving a little fast through this portion of the uh, presentation, not to kill you with the PowerPoint and get into some more of the live uh, feature function. Um, so again, um, you know, Eclipse, Docstar, ECM are very specific um, to being cloud enabled. So we can include a number of uh, cloud hosting capabilities in here, um, you know, in terms of uh, PIF has its own Amazon cloud storage. Uh, we have a very competitive cloud hosting program and uh, we can bundle all your support service into one low monthly fee. Um, 
and depending on the type of hosting package you go with, um, there's some no contract type packages. Um, there's obviously no need to back up because it's all in the cloud, multi-redundant. So we do have plans starting at $199 a month for your smaller implementations, and depending on the number of gigabytes and users, um, you know that goes up from there. All right, so uh, you know some of the other complementary technologies you might not know about. And again, we're not going to be going through any of these today, but these are the five products that PIF uh, you know supports and sells. Uh, the document management, which you're going to see today, which is DocStar, our smart OCR. Uh, if you are looking to do AP automation, uh, check out this product. Uh, full workflow, uh, obviously within DocStar, but also within our web forms. So we do full you know, business process workflows, if this, then do that, um, automating common business routines. Our web forms are one of our fastest selling products, allows us to really allow you to um, enter data into a form without having to hand write that data, which allows us to repurpose that data for multi uh, downstream workflow processing. And then our robotics capability, the ability to do uh, robotics process, which is uh, same, essentially a robot that we set up that can automate common business tasks, like data entry of AP invoices, for instance. All right, and uh, so ultimately, um, you know, we'll attach these documents to the webinar, and you should get an email notification from us in about a day with the recording, as well as uh, what we call our what to expect document. Uh, this goes over our current training plan for both uh, Eclipse DocStar conversions as well as new users, deprecated features, and a typical training plan. A lot of people ask for additional uh, training, and there's a great site, carecentral.docstar.com, and you can register there as a customer. And they have um, you know 20 or so micro lessons you can take. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to go to today uh, is uh, in included in those micro lessons. And certainly if you have a question, you want to talk a little bit about your particular process, feel free to get with us um, or myself here with my contact information or call our main number. Uh, certainly pivtech.com uh, is our website and uh, you feel free to reach out. All right, so a few things here. Um, now you should see my Docstar screen. I'm running the uh, 1742 release, uh, and you'll see it's a little, it might be a little different than what you have with the clouds and, and the blue um, kind of background. So a few things here on the home tab, you'll notice that we have this buzz space area. The buzz space is great for embedding um, SharePoint links, uh, links to web forms. Uh, this is basically a customizable website and based on uh, your particular needs like standard operating procedures or specific documents you want uh, people to see, you can post those here with hyperlinks. Um, it's kind of a, a, kind of a, a nice place to, to store uh, readily available information. Um, on the left here, you have your full uh, navigation bar, so the concept of a folder, and uh, you don't have to use folders in our vernacular, um, but, you know, the folder does provide some logical capabilities here, logical equations. Um, but a right-click, uh, you're going to notice there's quite a few right-click functions, uh, the ability to create additional folders, rename or delete, and then modify security. And again, all of these are feature permission-based. Um, so as part of the admin setup, uh, you are either granted that capability or not. Uh, once I select the modified security on the folder, you're going to notice that there's some additional uh, sections here that you might not be used to, this ad hoc users, ad hoc groups. And this is that concept of, um, you know, the same concept of a security class like public. You know, everybody can see this um, or, hey, AP can see this, but you might have a user that may not be in that group but needs access to those documents. So that's where you can add user uh, to a specific folder and also to a specific document. And then all the permissions. Again, you can you know can go through these uh, in detail, but given the length of time we have for this demonstration, um, you know this this will be a separate con uh, a separate presentation. So things like the ability to lock down 
printing, emailing, exporting, those types of things can be done either at a folder or at a document level. Uh, okay, so uh, additionally, uh, we have the retrieve. Um, so a lot of people are used to the old retrieve box, which was somewhat complicated. Now we have the search bar. So searching is pretty easy. So in the search bar, um, as you see here, I type in the word Acme. Um, the nice part is that you can continue to add additional keywords to find something. And now below uh, in this white area, very much like a Google search, it will give you some keywords that are already in the database. So if I'm going to select Acme BOL Bill of Lading, this will return only the Acme Bill of Lading. Now you can use all sorts of wildcard functions um, and you know different types of syntax here. So um, I can do something like Acme or 3D pipe. And in this case, it will find me Acme and where it finds things like 3D pipe. Um, you know, so it's and or. And then you could use uh, things like and or not. So you can use and. You could also use a wild card. So if I want to do Acme star, the star is used as a wild card. So it'd be Acme company, Acme distribution, Acme paints. And this will return everything with Acme. Now, a few things here. If you go to your right, you'll see the Docsar yellow area. There's a user preference area. Now, if you go, this is a redesigned. You hit the search, and obviously we're in searching. Um, you'll notice the auto wildcard and auto quotes. Okay, so auto wildcard, basically, if that is checked, you don't need to use the asterisk. It will automatically just assume that you're looking to run an, uh, basically an anything search, Acme something. Um, auto quotes is used for string searching. Okay, so in, in this uh, Docstar ECM, you also have the capability of searching for keywords. Okay. Not keywords meaning in a field, but keywords within the body of the document. So let's see here, we find this closing party, and I'm using the quotes, which means that I want to find anything where it's disclosing and party, not where you find disclosing or party. So quotes mean that they will stay together when we search, and you'll notice here we don't find anything in our fields for disclosing party because it's actually in the body of the document. So we have our hits area, and you'll find here, it'll highlight on the text area where it actually finds the word disclosing party. Now this uses um, the full page OCR function. Uh, this is just part of the workflow. And again, that comes out of the box with the core system. So uh, this keyword searching is available at no cost to you. It just needs to be set up. Okay, so um, back to here, if we go back to our retrieve tab, you're going to notice when I select it, there's three panels at the top here. Now, you'll notice anything you add in this uh, root bar here will go into the text area here. Um, but you can also segment this, and as you'll notice, we find disclosing party. I'm going to clear this, so you have the clear button, and I'm going to type in the word Acme here. Okay, and we're search for that. Now, you'll notice it's going to bring back all of our stuff, and one of the columns here is content type. So I could say, you know what, I only want to find the AP invoice where you find Acme. So you can further segment by using these panels here to uh, focus your search criteria. Again, you can also do that with folders. So if there's a specific folder you only want to look in, then you can also use that. And one of the features here is the include subfolders function. And again, this will probably do the same exact thing because all of my invoices are in my accounting folder. Um, so uh, additionally, you could also say, give me, um, you know, Acme where it's an AP invoice, where it's in that folder, but only give me where the invoice number uh, for instance, number is equal to 123488. And if I search now, it should only give me that one document, as you see here. 
So this is how, and you can use multiple parameters here. So if you're looking for specific information, you're able to add um, these items. It won't prompt you. So again, you know, in this particular case, if I was to save the search, it's going to be very specific to this invoice number. But I can come down here and I can say invoice search, and I can hit the save button. And when I do that, now I have that save search. It's in my list here, invoice search. So I can rerun this search over and over again. Okay. Now that also shows up to the right here. I don't know if you see this little drop down. To the right of the search button, you'll also see the invoice search. Okay, and then again, runs our invoice search. All right, so let's clear that out. Um, we'll fold these panels back up. So some of the other things you can do in the searching area, so if I come back here and run that disclosing party search, you're gonna notice you have the actions area, okay? So certainly when you click on a document, it will show you a preview on the right. Now, if you select multiple documents by using the top checkbox, you can hit the view button. So a lot of people don't realize this, but if you're looking to index uh, multiple documents at a time, instead of having to go back to the search screen, you'll now be shown viewing item one of eight, and I can now peruse through all the images without having to go back and forth. Okay, so very simple. So that's the view function. You also have the ability to email, print, or what we say save a copy, which is export, multiple documents at one time. Okay, so a few things with the email is the ability to send an internal hyperlink. So that's a, a function. Uh, so you have to be a, a, a Docstar user. So instead of sending these, you know, uh, eight documents to someone as an attachment, like a PDF, which you can do here, um, I could send it as a hyperlink. Obviously it doesn't fill up your mail server. It's secure because you have to authenticate um, and it, um, you know, provides a result that they can easily start to work with those documents. But if you did want to output as a PDF, you do have this option of create a single file. So I could take all eight of these particular documents and merge them into one PDF file. That's helpful in a lot of cases. Some attorneys um, need to send, you know, you know, specific information for litigation purposes, they can merge everything into one nice file. There is this concept now of external links. So this um, is a external link, which means you don't have to be a Docstar user. When the user of this email um, gets this link, they can click it and will download it into their browser. Um, you can then apply a password to that. So this is ideal for large format drawings, uh, confidential information that you need to distribute. It's not encrypted. The physical URL is encrypted, but the physical document is not, but you can provide a password. Um, and again, you would have to set up your system so that outside access um, and likely SSL and things like that would be able to be enabled. But you'll also notice at the bottom, you have the open in Outlook and the send. Um, so the send button is new, newer. Um, and again, that uses SMTP. So if you are on a mobile device where you don't have a Mappy client or Outlook, you're able to send these documents. Okay, so some other things. Export to CSV. This is a great little tool. This allows you to export all the metadata as it looks in the grid control here out into an Excel file along with a click here to view. So the each uh, row of data will have a hyperlink associated with it. All right, um, some other things here, um, you know, printing, um, you know, sending for approval. So you do have the request approval or request mobile approval. I'll, I'll go into a little more detail as we move through the demonstration here. All right, um, capture-wise, uh, so a few things. Now, in my system tray, there's what we call the client. So this client is and allows our Docstar ECM users to be able to cap capture to a cloud solution. So if you are uh, running on PIF's cloud, you have this little capture client that will allow you to drive the local scanner. So this is where you'd set up the scan 
desktop scan device and all your predefined settings. And again, things like auto size detection for scanning different sizes of paper, uh, separation capabilities. And one of the new separation capabilities is this page count function. So you can now say, hey, I got all two page documents in this batch, scan them all in and not have to use separators, blank pages, barcode sheets. Uh, this is ideal like for if you always scan in invoices, you have a lot of one or two, three page invoices, you can stack those without having to use separators. Uh, it's also where we can use our batch import. And this is more, um, it's not rocket science, but you know, this is where I could set up um, a desktop drag and drop function. Uh, this is also where I could set up email monitoring. And this email monitoring is primarily around uh, the, you know, process mailboxes. You don't want to put, you know, your personal mailbox on here. This is for like AP invoices at or contracts at where we're pulling into a specific content type. Okay. And then additionally, you'll see there's a modules tab. So the print import and the office integration, which we're going to go over quickly. Um, that's where you install it. That is a free uh, utility. Uh, if you need, if you don't have the licensing, um, just reach out to our support and they'll be able to get you additional licensing for that. But as you see here, we have our scan um, and our import. Um, if you don't have, if this is gray at the top, it means you don't have the client installed. So you can just click on the Docstar client here and you'll see install client services. This will install that little, this, this item here in your system tray. Uh, so that you can scan and you can use the office integration. Another way to get at that is in the user preferences area. You'll see in the user preferences area, uh, you have the ability to, uh, in the environment, install the client. Okay. So all those different items are there. Another nice feature within this user preference, and this is somewhat new, is in the workflow. Um, you have this concept of digests. Um, so if you are getting emails from, uh, from Docstar uh, and you don't want to get an email every single time there's something to do and you just want to get an email every day or something to that effect, you can use the periodic digest and, and tell them when you want to get the particular email. So that's a, a nice new feature there. All right, so we're going to do just a quick... Um, a quick capture through an import. Um, when I hit the browse here, you'll notice if I do use my client, if I have this little client application here in my system tray, I can use the multi selection. So I can use the shift key. Okay. If I do not have that running, I can only select a single document at a time. So the client does add some functionality there. In this case, it will. Um, bring that particular document into our little area below here. And again, the uh, the only choice I'm really making is the content type. So this content type here. Now, uh, there are some additional options, certainly when you click options, you know, things like auto rotating or removing blank pages or separating documents, things like that. Now, when you do it on the scan side, and you hit edit here, you get a few more fun, you know, different features. Um, one of them, um, you know, color, grayscale. Um, if you aren't scanning in black and white, you should be. Um, there's a huge difference in terms of size. You should be scanning at 240 to 300 DPI. Um, that is a best practice. And then things like um, multi um, multi size detection. Uh, the ability to scan in duplex, front and back. Uh, certainly, if you do remove blank pages and, and scan in duplex and something like that, you know, the back of that document may have a blank page. So then we just remove it as part of that process. Okay. So all sorts of configuration there in terms of, um, you know, scanning. Uh, so in this case, I've uh, selected this document. It came in and it automatically assigned a particular workflow to it. So I can now submit that, and this will now go into our workflow queue, okay? 
So the workflow queue is essentially this concept of everybody in the system has their own area where they perform their work items. So we'll see here in the work items area, you know, items that are for the admin, things that came in recently. You can see these columns. I can click on the column. It will automatically sort ascendingly or descendingly. I can also change the layout of these columns. So if I go into my actions here and go down to the bottom to come my column chooser, and the column chooser is available in any of the grid results. So in the retrieval screen or in the uh, workflow items here, you'll notice all of the columns on the right that are displaying. And hit the uh, minus sign to remove it, hit the plus sign on the other side to add it, and then you can drag your columns around. So if I wanted the account number, I just simply add the account number here and this will be added to and as a column. So you'll see now account number is a column. I'm not really interested in that, but we'll remove that now. So really easy to modify the interface of, of this screen. Um, any revision control or line item detail will be shown um, with an arrow pointing down here. Uh, and again, you can then actually uh, modify the metadata right within the grid control, whether it be in the retrieval screen or in this work items area. Um, if you are permitted to see, uh, and you are a workflow administrator, you'll be able to see other people's queues and what they have in them. And as you see here, Brent has nothing in his queue because we're going to process that. Now below, in the dashboard, you can now also see either by workflow or by assignee a general overview of how many items and what items and at what step they are within the process. So let's process that one document that came into the admin here. So this was the one we just captured. So we're going to double click on that. This will get into our uh, web viewer control, our document viewer control, and you'll see here uh, very much like a template used to prompt you. This will prompt you in this case only with one selection. Um, actually, I want to, and, and this is a good example. So this actually ran the wrong workflow, so I can come into my workflow area and actually change, um, assign a workflow, and I'm going to have it actually do the um, AP invoice approval. And now you're going to see it prompts me with something totally different. So on the fly, and you have to be per permitted that, but um, on the fly, you can actually um, change the workflow or change an assignee on the workflow or something to that effect. So here it's asking me for a purchase order number. One of the nice features here now is this lasso OCR. So I can just draw a box around this particular area and it will automatically extract into this area on the dock, wherever the cursor is, okay? So when I hit the submit button, this is what we call a data link. It does the same function. It will go out and populate all of our information um, right into our screen here. Now, uh, additionally, from this uh, area, and you know, this, these panels, or we call accordions, uh, you'll see we have the line items. We can do things like line item coding. Uh, so this could be set up, and we call these field groups. And you could have multiple line items, and I can GL code or something like that in, in these areas. Quantity, you have the type ahead. Uh, you also have the ability to see related documents. So down here, if you're not familiar with related documents, um, you can here this didn't have this PO number for some reason. Oh wait, wait. I hit the save on that. That should bring back all my related documents. So I'll have uh, quite a few documents in this particular area that will show or not show. Um, actually how you turn that on is this content type builder here and you'll see uh, this related document section. All you have to do is select uh, where it's actually pulling from. So here we have, um, you know, if I want to go by vendor name, I want to go by invoice number, or invoice amount, I just click this link, related, hit save, and now this is going to bring back anything that's related to that particular document. Of course, 
for some reason. I'm just going to do a quick refresh on that. It should see now it pulls in anything that's related to that particular invoice in this case. So related documents, easy to set up, um, highly valuable uh, as part of, of the solution. All right, so um, we we did also, um, as part of the content type of this cog wheel, you're going to see kind of in all the different screens, whether it be the capture screen or the workflow screen. This allows you to configure and certainly you have to have the right uh, permissions to do so. But um, you'll also notice to the left of that link, is also an OCR region area. So we can actually create, if I click that button, I can create a zone area where uh, the system will automatically monitor and extract that textual information. So you see here, um, it brings open. Now what will happen is, you know, if you set this up, it will always look in that particular XY coordinate for that content type for that field. So that vendor name field will automatically get populated with this information, okay? Um, that can also be a barcode as well. I'm gonna hit the lead on that. But basically this would extract, if I hit okay here, it's gonna extract that information into that field and you'll notice how highlights it in purple, which means that it's an active zone, okay? So this is how you would do a zone OCR. You could certainly do it within the workflow. But the zone OCR will allow you to look in an XY coordinate on that document every time. And that's going to be ideal for things that you produce in-house. So um, things like AP invoice is probably not a good use for that. But things like POs that you produce, checks that you might print, um, purchase orders that you produce, um, reports that might have structured data that's always in the same spot. That's a great use. Uh, reduces a lot of that manual key. Okay, so some other things here that you can do. Um, from the Actions menu, um, you have uh, the approval. Again, um, at any time, I can request an approval from someone. And when I do that, all it does is it prompts me with who I want to approve it. So this is um, kind of an ad hoc approval. Um, it's, it's, it's a nice feature. And when you do that and you hit Notify here, what happens is an email notification gets generated out to that particular user. So you get something that looks like this. Um, so request approval, and then you'll have this approve or deny area within that particular email where you can actually approve it. Um, any of the custom metadata can be added also to that particular document um, you know, for, for your purpose. Now, uh, same thing is true with, um, you'll notice here, and this is um, a new feature, it's called request mobile approval. Um, so this has a little bit more functionality, but it does the same thing. So you can attach the document, you can show what lines actually show up within the body of the document. And um, so this is actually configurable and something um, you know, that you can add for mobile device support. Again, you would have to expose your Docsar system to the internet or through some mechanism to be um, externally accessible. Okay, so those are two out of the box functions, the approval. Uh, you do have the full audit trail. Um, so this does tell you um, action type and what happened. So is it a change in uh, value or was it, you know, did I delete something? Um, things like that, and this is accessible if you are granted that permission. Um, same thing here with, um, you had an email, we showed that previously. Um, the modify security, so if I'm in here, inherently this document will inherit the folder permissions or the content types security class. However, if you choose to modify the security, you can do that manually here. Or you could do this as part of a workflow. So in a lot of cases, our customers want to scan or capture, and then that person that's capturing it, they want to remove their access. So that's a great use of ad hoc security. I think that's a very underplayed feature in this current product set. Okay, so some other things here. Um, as you notice, I'm in a workflow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm in the, as an admin, I'm going to hit the submit button here which is gonna um, push this into, 
our system, good. All right, so now it's in Brent's queue. So if I go into Brent now, and I'm multiple people here, I was the admin, now I'm Brent. So you see now it's in Brent's queue. He can now go in. Now we can execute a number of different things. One, maybe it came to him in error. So he can go down to the workflow area and you have this change assignee. So I can then reroute it back to someone that is more appropriate. So that's a nice feature. Um, you'll obviously see here the approve and deny, and that's part of the, um, you know, the request approval or our multi-function, uh, multi-step approval process. Um, you also have the ability um, down here um, to set a due date. If you do this and you set a due date, it will email you continually when that due date comes due that, hey, this is due, and it will continue to email you. There will be a uh, a link in the email that says extend by 24 hours, which gives you the ability to extend the due date from the email by 24 hours. So this is great for anything that's expiring or requires, um, you know, some sort of an expiration date or something to that effect. You do also have all your uh, annotations. Um, this is a webinar. And these uh, sticky note annotations are also fully searchable. So anything that's text-based like this is fully searchable. So if I hit save here, and now I want to do this is a webinar in my search box, this should find that particular document, as I did here, finds that particular document. So as we talked about before, using the quotes means that I'll find it all together. Um, so that is a, a nice feature, and not a lot of people know that you can actually search on those uh, annotations. Uh, the the other things are you do have the ability to show or not show those particular items. Um, redactions are a separate uh, output item. So when we print, email, export, any of those items, you'll see when I do that, you'll have include annotations include redactions again so those are two separate so you might want to in not include the annotation but include the redaction and you can do that at any time all right so some other things um, thumbnails you'll see on the right there that's pretty easy um, you do also have your page options things like reordering and deleting and if I want to add a page, the only current way from the viewer control is using a desktop scanner to insert or append or replace a page within the document. Otherwise, you're going to have to use the merge feature. Okay, so I'll show you how that works. Um, you also can right click on the thumbnails and be presented with either reordering, deleting, or the ability to split items. So if you did send in um, you know, five pages, uh, and you wanted to split that two and three pages, um, respectively, uh, you can use your split document function. All right, so some other ways of capturing. So if you're familiar with um, Outlook or any of the Office integration, you'll see that we have this Docstar ribbon control button. Uh, this is just another way to capture documents. To, save to Docstar here. And the benefit of this solution is that it will save in its native format. So I'm going to select our correspondence, and we can type in uh, webinar, and we'll say as our contract party, and then hit upload. So this now stores in the native MSG format, which is a native Microsoft Outlook format. Okay. Now we can also do uh, a capture information uh, through our print driver. So this actually has a, a, an attachment. So if I was to double click on the attachment here, we have also our print driver. So, and again, these are available in the module section of your client. And you'll see here I have the Docstar PDF. So this does very much the same thing, but instead of creating you know, a native Word or Outlook file, it's gonna create a PDF. So I'll just say this is correspondence. And let's say webinar here so we can find this later and hit upload. So now these two documents are in the solution. Now, um, in some cases, you might not want to have to manually print everything. So we have this concept of um, 
drag and drop. So at the top here, you'll notice I have these different icons here. And this is using our client. So in our client, we've created a batch import process. And the client uh, will allow us to see. So um, here we have our scan. Um, um, uh, let's see, uh, send to PO. So this, you see here, the second one, it says send to PO. So basically, I've just said, hey, look at this folder on, 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 my, on my drive here and put in the purchase order content type. And then after you're done with it, delete it. So that's all it's doing. And it's scheduled to run every 15 seconds. Okay. So all I need to do here is literally drag and drop. So I'm going to take this and drag it into my PO folder, which will get monitored and brought in. So that's another function in terms of being able to work uh, for capturing documents very easily. Now when we go in here and we want to type in the word uh, webinar, uh, we'll get we'll get that result back. Okay, so here is the um, the invoice that we had previously put in, and here is the email that got put in. Now, when we do put an email in, you're going to notice that any attachments will be following pages. So you get the body, page one, and you do have this little paperclip item. So you do know that it is an attachment. Okay. Now, because we stored the native format at any time, we can go to our save a copy and I select native. And when I do that here, it's going to download that particular MSG. And when I click on it, it will now launch that right back into Outlook. Okay. So very easy to work with from that perspective. Okay. So we're, we're, uh, got about 10 minutes left here. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, just finish up, uh, with, um, the, uh, revision control and also the uh, smart link capability. So we'll, we'll kind of show you how that works. All right, so the first thing uh, that we're gonna do here is we're gonna show the office integration using a Word document. So I have this NDA template here and uh, we're gonna save in an NDA contract and then we're gonna revision control it. So here we have uh, this NDA, um, we want to save this in, so we have the doc star button. Now you're going to notice here on the right, this check-in area is all grayed out because it knows that this is a new document. So we'll select save to doc star, and we'll select that this is a contract. Okay, and then we'll select the contract party as webinar, okay, and we're going to hit upload. You also notice. I'll um, we'll just quickly do that again. Uh, you'll also notice when I selected contract, the workflow automatically set to convert to text, which is an OCR process that's going to read all the, you know, the text. So I can look for disclosing party or any information within the body of that document. So by selecting the content type, delineates what your default security, workflow, inbox, et cetera, will be. Okay. You do also have the option, uh, and this is part of this draft or published version. So if I did draft and I did an upload of a draft, it's going to also um, save that a little differently. So let's go back now into here. We'll search for that webinar again. And here's the NDA um, that we just brought in. And you're going to see, <clears throat> excuse me. You're going to see a few things. One, uh, the contract party's webinar, and then you have your version control area down here. So if I want to make a change to this, uh, all I have to do, I'm going to just close this. Uh, I'm going to hit the checkout button. So one of the new features, instead of it just downloading, it's actually going to download and then start Word for you. Okay, so Word should, and, the, and my task tree on the bottom should start blinking. And um, now I'm in here, and I can now come in and say this is with uh, between ABC Company, and this is uh, I want this to expire at the end of 2018. Now, when I go to the Docstar area, you'll notice now this check-in area is all um, you know highlighted. So I can add comments, uh, made, change to company, and date. 
Okay, hit enter on that. And then hit the check in button. When I do that, when it says complete here, that I know to close and I can go back in and uh, see uh, that new version. So here's the new published version. Now, notice when I'm on that version, it's blank on the right. So what happens here is we use a web viewer control that renders the native document into a PNG. So this way, you can be on any device and be able to see the document. So when I actually are on a document, it's a PNG or an image of that particular document, not so much the word document itself. Okay. Um, and as you can see here, when I click back on, it should be on there. And then you can see any comments like made change to company and date will show up in this comments area below. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Um, so that, that kind of, uh, you know, most of the uh, functionality there that we went through is, is real basic. Um, this is another, I find, very useful tool. It's called Smart Link. Um, it's a small add-on application. So this allows us to use hotkeys or buttons. And this is a fake CRM system here that we have some information in. And, and I want to be able to search for this particular document. So I hit the, um, I have an F7 key here. So if I hit F7, uh, it's then going to automatically screen scrape that information and automatically populate all matching documents that have, um, in this particular case, that purchase order in it. So this was one of the documents previously that we had looked at. Uh, in this case, it brings open that document. Um, so as you see here, um, it uh, allows us to quickly move through documents very quickly. Now, this can be configured on multiple uh, values as well. So if we're just going to close, I'm going to close this down here. And um, if we were to navigate and I want to now grab this vendor name, there's a little configuration utility here at the bottom. And I can actually change. In this case, I want to search by vendor. I can just come in here and search by vendor. So I can just change this out. For instance, and squiggly bracket, and then apply. Okay. All right. So now, if I hit F7, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> uh, so that's that's my fault for doing that right in the middle of a demo. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I know we went through quite a few uh, <laughs> items. Um, there are some questions out there, so um, I guess the the first thing is let's see here what do we got compliments compliments um, all right, so I'll open up the phones if you have any questions, just raise your hand on the bar on the right you'll see there's an attendee view, and uh you know you'll see that we have uh oh, oh here we go. Um, yes, uh, I don't see anything but Brent's picture. It's a nice picture, but it looks <laughs> PowerPoint. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Do we have anybody that's raised their hands? Uh, no. Okay. Well, if you don't have any other questions, I'm more than happy to uh, do a private demonstration. If there's certain areas of the program that um, you're real, you're more interested in, I'm more than happy to do that as well. 